second in series of the Immingham scene that came past from the Broad to Hull in the ferry and uh, we've got a nice big ship coming in here. The photograph on the computer looks a lot nicer than the ones I've printed and I've tried three or four different ways so I'm going to try and use various parts of them and enhance them myself to get to bring up the reds of the boat and so on more. I like the idea of working up the centre of the sky here, the light area, with the knife and then working outwards with the brush and coming over with the roller afterwards. And I'd like to slab up slightly on some of these areas here as well and use the sponge roller down and around here as I did with the previous one. Um, it's got potential. I've no idea where it's going to go. It's good fun that way. Let's just see what happens, shall we? I think I'm not going to start with the lightest areas here with the knife. I'm going to start with the, uh, the darker greys and so on. Work some of the lighter colours over the top and perhaps work back into that. Um, so I'm going to take my big brush. But I don't want really bright colours here, they're quite muted and soft and uh, almost mid-grey mid pastel shades, many of these. So uh, I don't want to uh, make it garish. Put my nice two and a half inch here. If that colour isn't right where I mixed it for, I'll use it somewhere else. Get some darker colours of this warm coming through. It's a colour that's going to glow through the, the turquoise I'm going to go onto here soon. Cover camps as quickly as I can to establish the tones and where they're going. My stay wet palette here that I use and I slap my, my brush into this little bit of water occasionally. Don't want too much, just test that. No more yellow in there, take a little bit of yellow ochre into that, bring that down a bit. And then maybe a touch more of the light magenta. Just the right sort of tones that we're after. Right, try that. Test it on the canvas. Uh, it's still not blue enough. A bit more blue. A bit more white, a bit lighter. There, we're getting it now. Look, lovely colour. That's the smashing colour I want it so. I'm going to come down into the water, I think, in a minute as well. So, I'll come along here. A bit of that down there just to get it started off. This light grey that's just coming through down here. I'll leave little bits of white showing here and there just so I know where my drawing is. Lovely blue greys in the background that I really want to establish. I'm linking photographs together so although I'm sort of trying to keep a make a sky that will work, I'm also aware that uh, it's very abstract. And, uh, to stay within the bounds of abstraction here as well. And then I've got that colour on my brush. Let's just whack it. I'm not going to waste paint. Get some, I want to get this canvas covered as well, so <coughs> the more I can plonk on at the moment, the better. Mixture of yellow ochre. A bit of magenta. Uh, just to get the base coat here. It's really important to me, as I say, the abstract form of this, the fact that it has figurative images is only a part of it. Um, it's like my secret series in a way that, although I'm painting about people um, and cafes and situations which might on the surface seem quite picture postcardy. Underneath there's a lot of hidden stuff going on because the images in those are what's happening between those people, what's happening in the background, um, in their minds, what's about to happen, what is the storyline and of course then we've got the, the colours and the planes again, all these various shapes going on just like in this. Um, bringing the brushwork across. So we've got both horizontal and vertical strokes going on here to give the idea of reflection and water. Watery glaze to 
pull this together so we get this very low light glowing through here. And we go again, I'm going to come up to the turquoises up here now. So I said I was going to go lighter, I'm going to the mid tones next. What have we got there? Oh, we've got a beautiful, beautiful light turquoise up here. I want to leave that. I'm going to have, maybe have to use a sponge roller here soon. So I've got lots of effects that I want to get as well. Coop that over. One layer over another. So although I, I do say that the simplest way of painting is to start loose and finish tight and to uh, put the right colours in the right places and the right shapes relevant one to another, there are techniques that we've got to take into account when doing this, like this, which um, even though we're putting in, just painting in shapes, it's not quite as simple because we don't get those colours to work one to another unless we've got the techniques and the brushwork to do it. And of course the basic drawing to start with as well. I don't want this white canvas left behind. This cheaper canvas tends to, uh, a cuckoo to set in priming tends to be uh, very dryly primed and uh, we don't get the showing through a bit that I don't really want. So sometimes I'll do it with a bit more water and blend it in that way, other times it's just scumming away over the surface. Somebody said on, 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 on here the other day, oh, amazing how you get green coming into the sky. Yeah, we do. In reality, without doing abstraction like this, we still find these colours are there if we really look for them. many colours that I can see in this photograph. And I've trained my eye to be able to see more colour, not only that, but <clears throat> to enhance colours I can actually see to a power of a colour, in other words I can see things are more warm or more cool or more um, towards one colour that's in the picture. And I can bring that out as I'm going along and be more aware of it, it's more the word I suppose for that. Uh, that's how I keep coming backwards and forwards with it. So if we've got that canvas showing you can always take a bit of water and and thin wash and wash into it. And this turquoise a blue or is it a green? Is it a, a cool a blue green or a strange twist? It is it certainly leans towards the greens as turquoise, doesn't it? Palette knife is flat and the painting knife is um, <coughs> like a trowel up at an angle. The water come down there, but of a nuisance. And that's what happens if you get water dribbling down your canvas and you don't want that effect. It's uh, I want to get a medium coat of paint over here because I want to put in um, some lights with a knife soon. I'm going to make up a, a warm yellowy grey there. I'm losing some of the shapes that I had earlier but I'm not bothered because I can come back and work over them. I'm going to put the creams right through this soon so it's going to come right over this uh, colour I'm doing now. It's just as a base coat, just to get the right canvas really. Watch that because it's lifting the paint slightly there. Not really what I want to happen. Okay, I'm going to take the knife now and uh, Mix up some of this cream that's going on in here and just see if we can use the knife for that. It might not work, it might look too technique -y, but until I do it I won't know. So, let's, uh, what yellow am I going to have there? I'm going to take some lemon at first and make it quite a cool yellow with a little bit of and the ochre into it. Let's see what sort of yellow we get with that. Oh, it looks quite a nice yellow. Let's just see. Yeah, that's not that's bad. Uh, and I want that to be coming right through here. Come all the way in. Right down through here. 
Yeah. And we use the roller on the edges of it, and we'll see on a brush. So it's all new, it's all new experimentation for me as well. So you'll see some, me doing something for the first time. I've no idea how it's going to go. brush to bring it out. Let's just have a bit of fun and play with a roller a moment to see what happens if I just break it up a bit with the roller. Put some of that onto my roller so it just at least takes it, picks it up. Sort of break out this colour a little bit into these around these edges. Just working. Reflect a little bit of up here into the clouds a bit more. Maybe just in some of these areas too, just a little bit, just catching on the edge. A bit too much, I understand how too much, we'll just take it back. Spit. Some of you have, you know, looked at this roller and you thought, what can be done with the roller? But I don't see anybody else really exploring it very much on in, in the art world. It seems a shame because this, these rollers are wonderful things. Just look how they can be used. Being pretty, pretty, a powerful piece of uh, abstraction as well as it being slightly figurative. Yes, man. Uh, a little bit warmer. I'm going to take a touch of cadmium. So keep looking for these changes in colour hues. Somebody said to the day, "Oh, yes, it's all done with um, complementary colours." No, it's not. But we're playing warm against cool light against dark very much as well. It's not just colour hues by any means. When I get the um, dark against that, this will start to make more sense. So we're playing, as I say, one colour against another. This is not complementary colours, this is uh, colour hues. I want to come down and actually start to get in this silhouette here now. Um, Because once I lose that white, I can see my colours a lot more, and it'll be a lot more fun for me as well. Right, it's dried off now. Um, a little bit uh, darker than I expected, but it's fine. And uh, it's time now to work some colours over it. Before I do that, I'm just going to take my knife and just come back there with a little bit lighter colour. It's it's sunk just a bit too much for me. Bring it up to be a very cool. Yellow. Throw it a little just to soften the edges again. Well, it's time to carry on now and try and do a bit of the uh, darker colours towards the base here. And uh, I'll carry on with flats on that in a moment. And let's have a look at some of these colours down here. Some delicious colours. Some of them thicker than others. This one, uh, we'll put on some bouncy only here for the moment. The sun's just coming around behind my canvas, which can be a bit of a nuisance, but we'll just see how this goes first of all. Plus this paint on. I don't want to get too bogged down with painting figuratively, that's for sure. These lovely abstract shapes. This is all they are, they just um, turn into realistic forms when we put them together. They become recognisable in other words. But they aren't, they're just shapes. It's only paint. I remember saying to children in school years ago when I was teaching, just to, just to wind them up a bit, and the parents, uh, I'm going to teach you how to lie. Because this whole painting is a lie, it's only an illusion, it's not real ship, it's not real water. All we're doing is painting an illusion about these things. I 
may even bring some more crimson into that later, so put a bit of alizarin into it to clean the moment up a bit. A slight greeny tint to that purple. Yeah, and put a bit, bit of um, emerald into it, just see if we can get a slight green going on. It's a very strong colour, this purple, so it takes a lot of paint to, to change that colour. Slight green tint, and let me just see it on that. On the, uh, on now, on. now, can I get this brush to do the bleed I want along the outer thin line? Just along here, see so if I can go the edge of this brush, should be able to. It's not flowing as well as it should, I think. So, foil against the flatness of the water. And we'll work the lights against the dark in between that as well. Let's come back to this bit of There's just patterns and shapes. If I just do this jigsaw of putting these shapes into the right places, hopefully these chimneys and factories and docks will just appear. Put my colours over them later, I just want to get this established at the moment. So I've lost the shape there quite a bit. And I'll use that deep colour. Blues all the way through here. Bring them out again in a minute. Let's just get them painted in for the moment. Job to see because I've got the light shining in my eyes around the camera. Take some of that purple and brown. Even a little bit of um, deep blue later, and we'll just see if we can start to work some of these darks into the background a bit more. These lovely darks here. Prussian blue at the moment with burnt sienna. Put these little dark warms behind. Nothing like a dark warm behind. We'll put the warm to look warmer, we'll put a bit cooler next to it, like this, just a bit of blue down into here to bring out the red of that boat. And uh, that ship. Uh, start adding green into it. Take some deep turquoise and start to look at where that's going to go. Very deep turquoise green here. And down to there. Cut around this later with a sky colour. Lovely, rich, heavy colours. Pure colours. This green is going to come into it a lot more than I thought, actually. Colours you wouldn't expect to use together. That's one of the beauties of the computer. Is for me, it helps to bring out, show me other colours, other ways I can paint. My eye's not bad. I can see quite a lot, but even so, the uh, having, having the colours enhanced by a computer and played around with, it's great fun. As I get more colour on, so hopefully the thing starts to make more sense to you. And then they make these colours lighter because these are darker or stronger. And we start to get really strong pure colour in, everything changes. I'm probably going to have to leave this a while because the sun's just got too much to me and I need a break anyway. Well here we are again on the next day, the second day of it, and uh, I can see areas here that I need to tidy up, especially around the silhouette of the horizon. I may have to turn the painting a bit more this way so I can see it more directly because painting from an angle here, also I'm painting in perspective, I need to bring out these, these various um, depth-rich colours of the background here. Then work my way down, so I've got this bit of the sky completed and all of this band done, 
put it off of the water and we should about be there. So first of all let's take a look at this horizon. I'll carry on with a half inch um, flat here. You can see this is way out here in places. And I need to make that sort of mid grey again there that I was using. And you see immediately how that changes the whole whole painting really. It gives it a fine shape again. I need to just bring that down a bit I think in, uh, in tone. Makes a much more interesting edge this way as you can see. So we, this is the beauty of acrylics is that we can, and oils, <coughs> that we can work both ways with them. We're not just stuck with uh, like watercolour painting gradually up to the lights. Building up these almost like a watercolour by adding the paint gradually up into here to capture this uh, effect of the light just catching back here on these toes. Be ever so careful doing this sort of job because there's such major points in the picture. While we're doing that colour, we'll look at it anywhere else as well. See if it's uh, can be glazed anywhere else here. There's a slightly bluer tint back here as well. Now I've got that colour, and I'll just use it as a glaze to pick out one or two. It's a bit darker still, and to take it down right down. Literally bring it out <coughs> bit by bit, and then just play with these little highlights of colour. How are we going to handle this, I wonder? Well, I'm going to use the sponge roller again, um, back here, and then see if... Uh, I can do this with the filbert brush that I did before again, I think. Let's just see if I'm mixing a little colour for that. Um, we've got some lighter as well as darker tones going on there. First of all, I'm going to take a mid-grey with this, with the, just with the brush. But of course, if we use a colour, it's going to bring the colours out behind as well. So if I'm using this colour here, it's going to start bringing out blues and other colours in the background as well. I'm going to be standing in front of the work more, so I'm having to push you to one side. I'm sorry, I hope you can see it alright, but even though you're not seeing it straight on. And I'm playing these warmer, lighter bluey pinks against these cooler blues that I'm putting in now to this, to get the feeling of the ripples going back into here. Sometimes we can do things with quick and special effects, other times it takes a little more time to build a, a work up. Possibly. You could use a filbert for this or a flat. I mean a filbert's nice because you've got a rounded edge but the flat's good doing quite adequately so I need to start making this darker colour that I want to go over here and I want to better put that on with the roller as well so let's see if I can make that up now. It's going to be Prussian blue almost certainly. It's a greeny colour, so I'm going to add some brown to that Prussian blue and a little bit of a greeny turquoise here. Maybe too dark the colour I'm making now, we'll see. And, uh, no, it's about right. Have a constant challenge, yes, I get bored otherwise, but I want to be learning new things as well as showing you new things. So what I'm doing is sharing my problems as I go along and how I hopefully get over them. Like skies in a way, water we can have, especially at the edges of changes of colour, we get the darks coming into the lights and the lights coming into the darks both ways. I'll roll my brush, my roller through it, and we'll gently try that across here as texturing. Take that texturing coming right through and actually linking in here. And I want to bring that and, and leap that boat down into the water. So unless we do these things, unless we try them out, we're just not going to know. And the worst that can happen is that I wreck the painting and I've got to repaint it. But I've got to take risks to move forward. Oh, that's starting to work. Now I've got to come back with even darker still, I reckon, in some of these marks and back up into here. Almost as dark, a little darker still with that mixture. I guess that's fine, that's the same colour as I just used up here. So it will link with it quite nicely. So we'll just put some of these warmer Prussian and burnt sienna and uh, yellow ochre marks. 
in amongst these waves too. But the texturing of the sky against the texturing of this brushwork, we're playing warm against cool, buff against smooth, light against dark. I'm going to take a little bit of a creamier blue and just touch up some of these waves here to reflect the, um, the sky a bit, I hope. So I'll go back to my yellow, ochre and white. A little touch of blue just to take it down a fraction and we'll just see Get the effects of light shimmering down across this water. As it goes back it's going to go bluer. So I'm going to add some more blue to that, darken it down a bit. And just soften it back into here. To lead the eye in this way a bit more now. So I'm going to start making some of these marks of the water leading into Painting just a little bit at angle, an angle here, just to lead the eye in from left to right. So it's quite deliberate that these few marks can, like the spokes of a bicycle wheel or the hands of a clock, can lead the eye into here, just over the surface a bit. And I can do the same the other side, just a little bit. Just a few marks, not too many. And it's this that I hope gives it the professional touch. It's this that this user experience of painting landscape and looking at things like this that uh, make a difference to a, a stronger, more powerful work. Even that, now you see just two marks there and I've got a boat just there. So we just indicate things and let the eye do the rest of the work, or let the viewer's eye do the rest of the work. Just make those cools cool. But that's an interesting point, isn't it? You see, I've just taken a little bit of, of red just to play against those cools. So I'm going to just bring a little bit of red into the reflections in places here. Not too much. So we'll sign that one, and we'll start the next more difficult one, I think, of the. Um, the child and mother on the beach. So we'll look at the whole painting now. And I'll choose a little bit, a little round I mean, for a signature. And there we go, a fairly warm dark signature to balance it. Pleased with this one. It's going the direction I want to go. Let's come in and look a bit more closely at the textures and the details. I feel I'm, I'm quite pleased with this one.